uh, IBC 2014, and uh, who are you? Steve Venuti, president of HDMI licensing. So HDMI 2.0 is not the thing to have, right? If you want to have 4K, it's better to have 2.0? So 2.0 was launched last year at IFA, and now we're seeing it in the market. It is 4K at 50 and 60 frames per second, so the higher bandwidth 4K that everybody's talking about. And uh, uh, this is like the standard now for, for uh, 4K TVs, right? Essentially, it's the standard for 4K TVs. Every 4K TV out in the market now is looking at the higher frame rates, and now we're looking at the broadcasters here at IBC doing the same thing, sending over content. So you said licensing. Does that mean uh, uh, consumer electronics companies have to license the HDMI? So anybody who builds HDMI into their products has to license. We have about 1,600 licensees right now. So all the people here de building devices are licensees of HDMI. And yes. who, who, who made who HDMI? Who builds this thing? Who does it? Uh, it used to be seven companies that were the seven founders, but now they've opened it up. There's something called the HDMI Forum, about 75 members. Anybody can join. So the leading uh, manufacturers of TVs and set-top boxes and chips and test equipment are the current members. It means like all the guys, if you talk about Samsung, they're probably in there. They're all in there. They're all in there. They're all and in they there. sit down and say, we, we need this bandwidth, we need that, and you, they, you just make it happen. Well, that sounds very easy, but they sit down and they yell and they argue and they scream, but yes, in the Some end... Some people don't agree? Yeah, they all have different ideas, but yes, you're right. They say, what do we need in the market? What do we need over the next three years? All right, let's build the spec to accommodate that. And uh, there's very high bandwidth in, uh, in like, uh, HDMI. Uh, how much, how, what kind of bandwidth are we talking about in HDMI 2.0? 18 gigabits per second. So 18 gigabits per second in the cable. It's much better than like a AirPlay or Miracast, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can you can't do that over wireless very easily at all. Uh, wireless has to compress quite a bit. This is uncompressed. That's why. I should tell you also, it works on existing cables. That's another thing people always ask. So the old cables still work with this new uh, bandwidth. All right, 2.0. What's going to happen with 2.1 or 3.0? Oh, we're we're taking a vacation now with 2.0. No, we're, we're of course we launch a spec. We have to look at what's next. So we'll look at what's next. I don't know if it's 2.1 or whatever we call it, but we'll look at what the bandwidth requirements and any other functionality we need in the next three years and develop it. How can so much bandwidth go through a cable? Is it like, with HDMI 2.0, is there a better cable, like better quality cable, or you just change something and it just works? No, we changed the signaling, actually. So what we did was we looked at the existing cables, we looked at how we can get bandwidth over it, and we changed the signaling so we can be much more efficient. That's why it works with existing cables. So it means that the, uh, the sender and receiver there's a signaling going on, and every time yeah. there's a new HDMI, they get better at that. So the, the sender and the receiver, so the transmitter and receiver, as we call them, those are the keys, right? That's where the magic happens, and that's where all the coding is done and all the signaling. And this, this is involving the chip makers and everything. So, sen so transmitter and receiver is all chip makers, right? That's all yep. silicon. Those guys that got to build it in uh, to, the, uh, to the silicon. Is it ARM? ARM chips? No, not ARM chips. What uh, kind of chips are they? Uh, they're, they're chips made by mo you know all, all the major... SOC manufacturers and, and silicon manufacturers. But they're nearby the connector, right? In the in the PCB, they're so probably near the connector. there's two ways to do it. One is a discrete chip, which is nearby the connector, and other ways that, that sooner or later it'll get integrated into the uh, SOC, so it'll be uh, just an integrated. Then it might be ARM-based, if it's in the it, SOC. It possibly, possibly. And uh, this cable, yes. what's the maximum bandwidth, potentially, in theory? 18 gigabits per second. In theory. Uh, Can we go like 100? Um, or? What, what, no. What's, what's so, in the HDMI cable? Uh, well, it could do 18 gigabits. It's not specified. To, let's put it this way. It's not specified to do any more than 18 gigabits per second. Whether or not it could, I can't tell you. The problem we're going to have with cables after we get more than 18 gigabits per second is that bandwidth is just getting to be so much for copper. Copper is going to have a hard time going any distance. This is copper. This is copper. So you know, it's not there, fiber. There are, you couldn't go fiber. You can go Cat6. You can go other ways. But the standard HDMI cable is a passive copper cable. And that's and, and, and so at any length, anything higher than 18 gigabits per second is going to be very difficult. So in theory, 3.0 might use another material. Possibly. We have to look at what the bandwidth requirements are and what the impact is. We have no idea at this is point. Is there any about, anything about the length of the cable because of copper? That if you go more than like certain meters, it might not be so good? So we don't put a length on the limitation in the specification. What we do say is it's got to have a signal strength at the end. For all practical purposes, though, the best manufacturers can't get more than maybe 15 meters with just copper. After that, you have to start using electronics to boost the cable or something like that. Nice. So this is it right here. That's it. Higher bandwidth, 2.0 overview, and we have uh, all this stuff going on. And uh, 50 or 60 uh, in general, it just works in both. Yep. Yep. All right.
and you have very high quality audio in there too. Higher quality audio, you've got dual screen, so 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 two two people can put on glasses and use 3D technology, but rather than left right, it's like one, two. So think about multiplayer gaming. I can play full screen, you can play full screen, I can't see you, you can't see me. But they're not both in 4K 60p, right? It could be. Ah, uh, they can both it be, that, be that high. It could be. That's part of 2.0. It could be that. It All depends right. on how you implement it, but it could be that. Uh, you've got four streams of audio, so you can hear different languages. Uh, 21 by 9, uh, increased audio sampling, 32 channels of audio. Imagine 32 channels of audio. Audio now coming, we call it 3D audio, where audio comes from above and below. So there's a lot of other things in, in 2.0. The big thing people are talking about is 4K, though. So I, I've seen lots of very affordable 4K TVs in China for $500. You get uh, 4K, but it's only HDMI 1.4. Yeah. And so they might have to talk with you to get to 2.0. Is basically it's mostly their chips, right? Not fast enough for that. It's yet. Uh, it's mostly chips, and so yeah, and so consumers are going to have to be careful about 4K too, because you can go out and get a 4K, as you say, a 4K TV very cheaply, but it only will go to 30 frames per second. And what they're doing now is 60 frames per second. So, you know, you got to be careful. But yeah, if those guys know how to build the stuff, and they can, and they will over time. Nice. Thanks a lot.